Welcome back to my devlog series on Project Wielder. Today, I will discuss the start of the project and introduce some of the game framework. The first step, and arguably the most important step, is, can you guess it? Source control. I've chosen to use Helix Core by Perforce, and I've done so because of its easy integration with the Unreal Engine. For those who don't know, source control is a system that manages and tracks changes in a project. As a solo developer, the main benefit of source control is that it provides a non-local backup of my entire project. If my computer burns to the ground, years of work is not lost. So, using Helix Core, I create a depot, which is the largest organizational unit on the server. Then I create a stream, which is how branching and merging are done in Helix Core. And then I create a workspace, which is where local files are stored and modified. I then create an Unreal Engine C++ project, add that project to the workspace of Helix Core, and submit the new changes within the workspace to the depot. I then connect Rider, which is my IDE of choice, to Helix Core, after which I connect the Unreal Editor to Helix Core. Now source control is fully set up. Next, game framework. The game framework is a collection of objects spawned every time the Unreal project is launched and serves as the backbone of that game project. First, we have the game mode. This object defines the type of game as well as the rules of the game, such as team structure, the number of points required to win, how points are acquired, what weapons are allowed, etc. Then we have the game state, which, as the name implies, tracks the overall state of the game, such as the score, remaining time, the current level, etc. We also have the player state, which tracks information about individual players, such as their score, team affiliation, health, stamina, and other stats. This player state persists across levels and through pawn destruction, making it ideal for maintaining player data throughout the entire game session. Next is the player controller. It manages the player's input, translating it into actions within the game, such as moving a pawn, selecting an item from a menu, changing in-game settings, etc. And then we have the pawn. This represents any entity that can be controlled by a player or AI. Often, but not always, the pawn inherits from the character class. So how am I using these classes? Let's first look at the pawn. I use the native character class, which inherits from the pawn. I make a child class that will serve as the base character class of my game. And then I create two children, one for the player and one for the bot, or the NPC. The bot character has an ability system component and a health component, the latter of which is inspired by Lyra. The player character has neither, because I need the data on the player to persist. Hence, I take the modular player state, create a child called wielder player state, and attach the ability system component and health component to that child. Now my super basic pawn and state setup are complete. As for the player controller, I begin with the common player controller class because, from what I can tell, it provides a more robust, extensible, and event-driven approach to player control than the default player controller. I then inherit to create the wielder player controller, which, via an input configuration asset, handles the input for moving, looking, and various actions for abilities. My game mode and game state classes don't yet have anything unique in them, but they will as I progress further. I hope you found this video interesting and or helpful. Be sure to let me know in the comments whether this is the type of video you like. Thanks again for all of your support. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like and a comment, and join my Discord. I'll see you next time.